Hey YouTube, it's Pomp. Today I wanted to cover everything there is to know about mount farming and how to do it as efficiently as possible in Dragonflight. I currently am at 459 mounts, despite only starting to play WoW in Shadowlands, and I've experienced a lot of the grinds necessary to get to 500. So this guide is going to be split into four sections. Number one is going to be add-ons and resources. Number two is going to be my difficulty rating of every expansion's mount list, alt efficiency, and raid farms to do with friends. Moving into our list of add-ons, the first and only really required add-on for farming mounts is Silver Dragon, in my opinion. So Silver Dragon goes ahead and marks everything on your map where a mount can drop from. It has a special icon. So for these Warbringers, for example, I only have one left to drop, so it's marking it as special right here. Um, on top of this, whenever you get close enough to see a mob spawn, if it is currently spawned, it will play a notification in the bottom right of your screen and play a special noise depending on what their drop is. So when you see a rare spawn, it also shows what their drops are and if they drop toys and such. Uh, Silver Dragon's a really good add-on to have just to be a completionist and get all the things you don't have in the game. The second add I'm going to recommend is going to be Rarity. Rarity tracks all of your mount attempts so that you can get an idea of what your luck is. So for instance, this one dire horn I'm missing, I've killed him a total of 43 times and I've had an 89% chance of getting him. So you can see I'm unlucky. Um, this only tracks stuff that you've killed with the add-on. Uh, it doesn't track kills you've done in the past. I don't think there's any way to get that info back. So this is your best bet on judging your luck from when you get this add-on forward. Uh, it's really good. Uh, as you can see, so I last killed Galleon, so it's showing... All of my attempts at Galleon, and yeah. The last add-on I recommend is one I don't even have, but it is called World Boss Timers. It's specifically for people who have a lot of alts and want to kill the, all of the world bosses on their alts. It'll give you an exact time of when a world boss is going to spawn so that you don't miss it and you can get there in time on all of your alts. With our add-ons out of the way, let's move into your primary resource for collecting mounts in WoW, and that's going to be simplearmory.com. So you're going to go here, you're going to log in, and then you're going to go to collectible, and you're going to go to mounts. So when you see this screen, you're going to get an overview of everything you have collected in your collection and everything that you are missing in your collection. And this is where you can get an idea of what you should be going for and kind of your easiest route to getting more mounts. So with all the resources out of the way, I want to jump into each expansion's mount list and my thoughts on all of them. So for my list, I'm going to skip achievement mounts because there's a lot of variability with each one. So let's just jump right in. So starting out, we have campaign mounts. These are all very easy. You just get them by doing the campaign. Doesn't take long at all. Um, this little daily mount takes all of four days, I think was not hard at all. So this, this rare mount on the right hand side I have, it's an egg spawn, but it is a 100% drop chance if you get the spawn to happen. Uh, the one on the left I'm still missing, I would say he is hard to achieve right now. I think he's a 1% chance in Azure Spam, he can suck. So I would avoid him, focus on other stuff first. So moving back to easy stuff, uh, this guy is just buy stuff on the auction house, very easy. Uh, this riddle I am missing, you need 25 renown with the centaur. I don't have that, but if you have it, you can farm it pretty easily. You're not looking at a lot of time to get it. Uh, this otter, I'm gonna mark in the same category. This is the fishing otter, Otto I think his name is, and he didn't take me much time at all. This was actually a really fun mount to grind. And now we're into renown mounts. Uh, these are all kind of, I would throw them all in the same category of just expect to spend quite a bit of time here. Um, not hard or annoying, but just it takes time to build the Renown. Uh, moving into Obsidian Citadel stuff. Uh, there is a snail. I believe it's this left one. He is easy. You literally just buy it from the auction house and have a healer heal you and you just get the snail. Uh, this mammoth, uh, I believe he... He kind of sucks because you have to do weeks of the dailies or the weeklies in the Obsidian Citadel. And then this slug, he is the 1000 uh, moat slug. He takes quite a bit of time just to farm all of that. Uh, I would put him as yellow. Uh, he does just take time to do. 
Uh, moving on to the Verdant Fly, you have to be max renown with something. I don't remember which. You have to be max with the Dragon Scale rep. That's right. Uh, after you get the max with the Dragon Scale rep, it takes doesn't take very long. the The worst luck I saw was someone had to loot like eighty of those Explorer bags to get this, but that's not that bad in the big picture. Uh, it's an enjoyable farm. Uh, moving on to the events. Uh, this, uh, this guy, you have to wait for the daily to pop up. He's the one where you have to use the new storm currency to purchase him. Not that bad if you just treat it as a daily. Um, this one in the middle, I don't, I got really lucky with this guy. I believe he's a 1% chance every week, so you shouldn't look to spam farm this, but if you have multiple characters, this is something you could do. Uh, you could camp your characters and just complete one grand hunt and just go AFK in the area and get a completion for it, and you have a chance at this guy. Uh, I got lucky. I wouldn't recommend to grind him, though. And then this guy on the right, same thing. He just takes some time to get a lot of farming in that storm zone. Whoops. A lot of farming in the storm zone. And then for our last mounts, uh, this one on the left is the Dungeon Otter. He can be pretty easily spam farmed if you just do the heroics. Uh, they can take the rings from there. But this one on the left, or the one on the right, is the raid one. And I do not think this is something you should go for early. Uh, you can try and beg your guild to give you the two things required from raid, but this can be a pain to farm if you're trying to target farm it. Uh, can't really expect to get lucky from lfr it's kind of just you have to hope your guild doesn't mind giving away the mount stuff if you really want it moving into shadowlands uh this torghast one is probably yellow right now uh this will only get easier as time goes on to do these torghast ones uh there's like four mounts to get from torghast right now it's kind of crazy but yeah definitely wait to do this i'm not in a rush to get it done uh this vendor mount is going to be yellow. I think it's 5k anima, and it requires some rep in the night phase stuff. Not hard, but easier stuff to be done. Uh, moving on to this little cradle. This cradle takes all of five minutes to get. Really good. Uh, this is a treasure one from Bastion. With flying, I'm going to mark this as green. You have to fly around, and I get, I think, 50 total things. Uh... This will probably take you like two, three hours, but it was really fun. I did it without flying in Shadowlands, but with flying, this is a breeze to do now. Um, moving on to the treasure one from Zareth Mortis. I'm going to mark this as yellow now. This is nowhere near as hard of a grind as it once was. So all you do is you just turn war mode on and you go to Zareth Mortis, and these treasures are kind of everywhere. And I think it's a 1% chance, but you can get a lot of chances each time you go there. Uh, not bad at all. Uh, this green frog, uh, I think he's a week of dailies. Doesn't take long at all to get done. Um, these war table ones, I'm going to mark them as yellow just because it's war table. But honestly, they're probably maybe green. Somewhere in between yellow and green. It's not hard to do the war table stuff. It's just war table interaction. So moving on to the riddles. Um... This one I'm missing on the left-hand side is a Shade Maw. He is not hard to get. You just have to follow a bunch of steps that I haven't done yet. Not hard. Uh, this one on the right is also not hard, actually. I don't think you need any friends for this. Uh, he was really fun to do back in the day. Uh, moving on to the Tormentors. Uh, I do not suggest this guy. I believe he's a, he is a 1 in 50 from the Tormentor spawn, and it's at every even hour, I think. Uh, but that might change depending on your time zone. And moving on to the Maw Assaults. I also do not suggest any of the Maw Assault ones. Uh, Maws still take a lot of time, and your the drop chance of these Maw Assaults dropping is pretty low compared to the amount of time investment involved in just completing the Maw Assault. So I would not suggest the Maw Assaults. Uh, moving on to Rep. I'm going to mark pretty much all of these as yellow. Uh, weirdly enough, all of these mounts up front cost 30k gold, which is kind of weird considering your gold could be much better off spent somewhere else. But they're not very hard to get. Uh, none of these reps take much effort. Uh, I think the hardest one might be the Corthia Rep. 
right now. Uh, but aside from that, nothing's really difficult here. It just takes time. Uh, for Paragon reps, I mean, all of these are going to be yellow slash red, honestly. Uh, I would I would even go as far as to say some of these are red and not worth your time to try for. I just played Shadowlands a lot, so I just kind of naturally achieved these, but I do not think Paragon reps should be your focus if you're trying to just get to 500 and stop, if that's your goal. So into Dungeon Drops, uh, this guy is going to be very easy in the middle. Uh, the one on the left that I'm missing is Marrowfang. He is a 1% drop. I would not suggest farming him currently. But same thing with the Tazavesh Glider on the right. I believe it is also a 1% chance from the end of the dungeon. I think your time is better spent farming something else for right now. Now we're into Raid Drops. Uh, I got Cutting Edge in the end of Sepulchre, so... This is a no-no for a long time, and I don't think you could get this. This is the AOTC mount from that era, so this might not be showing on your screen. Uh, the raid drops, I mean, this is a rare chance, and this one is also a rare chance. This is the Mythic Sylvanas one is the one I'm missing, but uh, raid drops, very hard to get from here. Uh, the zone one that I've got... Uh, Oh, this is good. Uh, this is you just farm an egg in Maldraxxus. This was very easy to get. It takes a while to hatch, but it's a free mount. Uh, as for daily activities, uh, Blanche was pretty fun, but now that there's no Blanche groups, this probably actually sucks. Blanche might be hard to do now without groups forming for them. Uh, the Loyal Gorger, I still don't have, and he also you have to farm an Anima to even spawn him. So I do not think he is very free. Um, moving forward, we have Reigns of the Wanderer from Corthia. Oh, this is finding melee every week. Uh, this is probably pretty fun nowadays. Uh, not hard to do. Doesn't even take much time to find her. She has certain spawns all around the map. Our next two is Dusklight and Dark Maul. Dusklight's the two the 10 egg total one you only get two a day so it takes five days of farming him but it's very easy to do you just go kill the mobs in the area and get the, the eggs uh dark maul also pretty easy do not think he had anything crazy uh i already marked all of the rare spawns just because there's so many of them and i had to remember what they're about i would be talking for a long time doing those uh, moving on to the necroray eggs uh, this is all hard. I do not recommend the Necro Eggs. This is daily locked and a rare chance to even drop. Uh, do not recommend them. The Covenant feature stuff can be pretty easy depending on which Covenant you're doing. Uh, but I, there's still better farms to be doing with your time rather than doing these. But they can be pretty easy. So with some editing magic, we are now skipped ahead. Uh, I filled out all of the Covenant stuff, but... There would be too much talking if I talked over every individual one, but main takeaways are that the first parts of the Covenant campaign stuff are very easy. Like these first four or five mounts in every single Covenant area are very easy, and then after that you might get some diminishing returns with your time regarding like the specific uh, Covenant stuff. So check out all my color-coded stuff for this Covenant area, and for the Protoform Synthesis, this was actually a really fun mechanic that I really enjoyed in Shadowlands. Uh, the worst part about it is farming the moats in the one specific spot, but I really enjoyed uh, crafting the mounts and doing all that stuff. Uh, all of this varies a lot uh, on difficulty. Some of these are really, really easy. Like the hardest part is getting the 300 moats and then you just go pick up the recipe and then you just craft it right off bat. But I would look into this yourself. Uh, some of them are going to be really, really hard now because you have to do the raid and have a group together. Uh, some of them are locked behind the rep, like getting Paragon cash. So I definitely wouldn't recommend the ones that I don't have. If I don't have them, they are very hard. So definitely I would not suggest any of these. But past that, they're all really fun and I actually really enjoyed the system. So that'll do it for Shadowlands. Moving into BFA, uh, we're going to start at the vendor mounts. So for the first four vendor mounts, your gold is better off spent somewhere else entirely. Uh, you could buy carries for much harder mounts to get than these. Uh, the three frogs on the left are all 
a mil in total. They're 333,000 gold each. Uh, you could buy hard carries for that kind of gold, so I would definitely wait on those. Uh, the fourth one, though, I actually researched, and he is, or the fifth one, excuse me, he is pretty easy to get. Uh, you just turn on war mode and go kill rares in Najatar, and you can get this in under a week. Uh, so I actually am going to probably end up doing that after this video. <laughs> um, moving on to the Crimson Tide Stallion, which is the second on the right. Uh, he is just... The, the hard part about him is waiting for the spawn to come up for him because you need a certain thing to happen. But then it's just a bunch of errand running. Uh, I don't think it's that bad. You just have to wait for the spawn. Uh, the Wicked Swarmer, that's probably three to four weeks worth of farming the visions from BFA. Uh, I marked it as like a uh, yellow to red in the middle. I, I marked it as orange. But he can be easy if you're trying to get two for one with the male muncher and that and you just save all your uh, mementos but i wouldn't go for it initially moving to the quests quafon's harness on the far left side is red that is a no-no it takes like a month of dailies your time's better spent somewhere else uh the two beside it uh are locked behind dailies and those dailies take like 14 days so i wouldn't suggest doing them but Moving on to the Kelp Stalker, the one I do have. Uh, I did this in BFA when it was active. You just had to do dailies with the the lady. Um, not that bad. I think it took 10 days of dailies. And then Reigns of the Spring for Alpaca. This is actually a really fun one to go for. Um, you said to feed uh, lettuce to the alpaca in Uldun when you find her. Uh, it was not bad at all. Uh, the Shadow Barb Drone, this is the month of dailies. Uh, I would not go for that. Moving into the medals, um, these guys are very hard to get now. Uh, the only way I know to get honorbound service medals from BFA is through the world quests when you're doing the Warfront areas because you can't do the um, the queued instance where you got the honorbound service medals before because no one's doing it anymore. Uh, there might be a way to boost this and do it easily, but the cheapest one is the one on the left, costing 200 And after getting literally all of the Warfronts, I believe I'm at like 125 medals. So this one on the left is going to be your easiest shot, but it's still... The rest of these are very hard. Um, the middle one is an Alliance one for 350 and the far right one's 750 So maybe you get the left one, but past that, diminishing returns are through time. Moving on to allied races, these are all really good. Uh, they're also very fun. Uh, I would suggest this grind, or the allied races grind to anybody. Um, I just missed most of BFA. I only played for all of like a month at the very end. Um, so these first three are not very hard. It's just world quest grinding. Uh, but past that, uh, these actually cost quite a bit of gold. So I'm going to mark them as like an orange. Um... So this, the first three are all 90k. So I would not suggest them. And this is the 250 um, cost one from Najatar. Uh, actually, that currency isn't that hard to get. I'm actually going to make this yellow. But you do have to be exalted with the, uh, the rep in Najatar. Same with this one on the right. You have to have an alliance character or vice versa. So just exalted in Najatar. And then this is the 500k one. Uh, I would not suggest that to most players. And this one on the right is the Old McCord exalted. And this is actually one that I was grinding out earlier. It is a good one to go for. Moving on to Hive Mind, the riddle mount from BFA. This is a really fun grind to do if you have five friends. So you all go out and get the puzzle items. I actually ended up doing it without a carry in uh, at the start of Shadowlands, and it was really fun. Uh, it doesn't take a whole lot of time. You're looking at three, four hours to complete it all. Uh, if you don't have a party of five, then you're just going to buy a carry for it. I think it's like 100k to 200k. Uh, not bad at all. Moving on to the Mechanical Cat Tinkering Mount. Uh, this actually isn't bad. I, I just didn't do it in BFA. You just go out and grind the mobs and pick up a quest start item, and I think it's doable in one day if you just sit there and grind it out. So, yeah, really free. Um, moving on to the zone mounts. 
these are all easy and going to get much easier to grind as time goes on as you're able to one shot them with any ability um i think right now these mounts vary from 50k to 100k in cost um now there is better mounts to buy with gold if that's the case but these are only going to go down over time in my opinion because the mobs will get easier to kill uh, you might even look to grind these yourself when you in a later patch when these mobs are one tappable with anything so now we're into rare spawns i'm going to mark this as the this blood serpent on the left is just you buy the crystals off the auction house and that's this is probably a pretty cheap mount to get now. I would say it's maybe like 20k if I'm remembering correctly with the shard prices. Uh, it is a cheap mount to grind. Um, this Frightened Kodo is also very cheap to buy. I think it's like 40k to buy a carry for it and have someone have the spawn for you. Uh, I've just missed it every time. I've even tried to camp this spawn before and I've just missed it. But he's pretty easy. Now we're at Fabius. Uh, Fabius is harder to grind i think this is like a 400 450k cost for a carry uh do not suggest doing him uh yeah he's a rare spawn in nagitar like a really rare spawn but once you get him you just take a selfie with him but i just never seen him now we're at the junk keep drifter this is a hard chance and same with uh, the rusty mechanical crawler. This is the mechanical crawler is probably my luckiest drop ever. I, I remember when I got it at the end of BFA, people around me were saying it's like a one in one thousand drop chance or something crazy, like a really really rare drop. And I got it, and I was like, everyone was freaking out because I got it, and I, I didn't understand rarity and stuff like that at the time. So that's backstory for me. But the silent glider from Soundless. Uh, yeah no soundless is a rough grind he's a i think he spawns once every eight hours so would not suggest doing him and he's a one percent chance every eight hours not a good grind to do this elusive quick hook is actually easy um he is a random spawn in uh Voldoon, i believe and you just have to find him and feed him the greens from the vendor from the auction house mount or the greens are sold elsewhere too but I've actually just missed his spawn. Uh, really easy to get. This world boss mount, he the world quest only comes up for it like once every three months or something. So it's red because of that reason. But when it's up, you should do it on all your characters. Uh, I got it in like my fourth attempt or something. I was lucky with it. But yeah. Now we are at warfront mounts. Highly suggest doing all of the warfront mounts. They are all very fun to do. Really high drop chance compared to every other mount drop in the game. Uh, you could do them once per week on each character, and they are very good. Um, this also coincides with a grind for the medals because you're doing world quests when you're out there. So you maybe look to buy the one on the left if you're Horde at the end of your Warfront grind. So that coincides there. But yeah. Now we're into Assaults. Uh, I only recently started doing the assault grinds and they're extremely fun. I'm going to mark them as like a greenish yellow, but they are very fun to do and not very hard. Um, this one is from grinding the harness and camping the spawn. Uh, it does require you to wait like two hours, but it's very easy to do. Once you get the harness, you'll just passively get it from killing mobs during the assault. It's just you need the assault to be up. That's the hardest part about it. So I love the assault grinds. They're very fun and the drop chances are pretty good compared to most other things in the game um moving on this one on the left is a rare drop chance i got lucky with him but the other two the drake of the four winds i even though i camp it i think i have like 20 something kills here he only spawns once every three to four hours and is still like a three percent ish drop chance so he's he's a rough drop chance for the time investment um if you're camping the spawns with a timer, this could be efficient if you're doing it on like an alt and killing it with multiple characters, but past that, uh, it's rough. The one on the far right is the Vulture mount from Uldun. Uh He's actually a pretty good drop chance. Uh, I think he spawns every hour, so he's a much more generous spawn. There's actually people camping this a lot when I get there, uh, when that uh, vision is up, or the assault is up, excuse me. So moving on to... The dungeon drops, these are currently, I would mark them all as yellow, 
but this will get easier as time goes on because you can just speed run the dungeon and get to the end and then just kill the final boss and get the chance at the mount. Um, I even do this. This is doable in Dragonflight. I can kill all of these solo uh, on, in Dragonflight with my geared character, but this only gets easier as time goes on, and then you can go and do them, and then they're pretty good once a week. This last one is from the challenge mode uh, Mechagon. Uh, it drops one guaranteed if you're doing it in a party of five and you do the achievement at the end. Uh, a carry for this isn't actually that expensive if you think about doing a carry route, but I just had a group of friends and we all did it. So, Moving on to the raid drops. Uh, these are all going to be red in current state. They require big parties. Maybe Gmod is like an orange, but yeah, still, I'm just marking them as red. And I don't think you can get this anymore. This is the AOTC mount from the end. So, yeah. Island Expeditions, uh, these are really, really fun to do in groups of friends if you have a group of three total people. Um, you can also buy carries for these. Uh, one of the mount sellers I follow, you recently started doing carries for Island Expeditions. Um, you can look into doing that if you're really trying to grind it out at the end, but these are really fun to do. And actually, I made a fair amount of gold from transmog from Island Expeditions. Uh, there's some expensive stuff you can drop in some good transmog here. Uh, this is really fun, but I would I would mark all of Island Expeditions as green because it's just really fun content to me, but not everyone's going to like Island Expeditions, obviously. So, <laughs> Same with these doubloon grinds. Um, I don't know why, but I saved up for 1,000 to get the guaranteed mount. I would, I'd actually mark it as orange first. This one on the right is orange. This one on the left is yellow because you just save up. It is 500 doubloons compared to 1,000 on the right. But yeah, I think the, the packages for a chance at these mounts is like 150. And it's on a weekly rotation. So you got to see what's drop, what mount is dropping from the weekly thing you can buy. But these are all really fun. I highly suggest doing the island expeditions if you have two buddies. Actually, you'll be able to solo this pretty easily in later patches. I, I expect to be able to solo this with ease. You can solo it now, but it's inefficient. So, Moving on to the Visions. Uh, Mail Muncher, I've just gotten unlucky with him. He's a 1-100 chance, and you get four chances each time you do a Vision. Uh, I'm just unlucky. haven't gotten the Vision yet. The last one is a Paragon Rep from the Nagitar area. Yeah, I do not suggest Paragon Reps to be grinding. So, yep, that's it for BFA. Speeding up through Legion, uh, we're starting with the vendor mounts. The one on the left is the Brine Deep Bottom Feeder from Fishing in Dalaran, in New Dalaran. Uh, this is yellow. Um, I've done some of it, not very hard. Uh, the one in the middle is the Arcadian War Turtle from the Curious Coins. It is very hard to farm the Curious Coins. I just get them from caches from like the Paragon Rep in Argus. Uh, but you can't really target farm them, I don't think, so it's very hard. And the one on the right is 2 million gold, so you're not doing that. There's much better stuff to do. Moving on to the quests, uh, we start with the Reigns of the Loth Lothian Prowler, which is the Fox Mount. This is hard because you have to get an RNG drop and then you can start doing the War Table quests, but I wouldn't suggest doing him. He's kind of hard to get. Into the... Arcanist Mana Saber, this is just doing a bunch of quests. I actually think this is pretty easy in current time. Uh, I'm probably going to look to do it very soon. Um, and then these four on the right, they are all battle pet interactions from world quests. I do not think they're hard, it's just I've never interacted with the battle pet system, so I don't really know how it works, but I'll look to do that very soon. Now we're into the riddles. Uh, this one on the left he is a once every six month world quest, I think. So that's why he's red. Uh, the one in the middle is easy. Uh, you just go to a bunch of random spots and then you get the mount to the end. Very easy. I don't think that takes very long at all. And then Lucid Nightmare is one that I actually did a month ago. And I just brute forced the puzzle. There is no weak aura to solve the puzzle at the end. Um, so the puzzle itself can be frustrating, but overall it took me maybe three, four hours. Depends on your luck with the end. Now we're into rep. Uh, this is all from Argus rep. Uh, they're all 10k gold each, but they are all very worth it. Uh, this is a good grind to do, and you'll get it passively for doing all these rare spawns. So the rep's all good. Uh, the one on the right is from the Army of Light. It's the 625k Lightforged Warframe. Um, 
I do not suggest buying it, although it is a pretty sick mount. So, The Reigns of the Long Forgotten Hippogriff is the one from getting the crystals all throughout uh, the area in New Dalaran. Um, I did it with War Mode on on a dead server, and it was really easy. Uh, I just got all the crystals myself and just got them out. But you could also buy a carry for this, and it's not that bad. Um, now we're on to my favorite rares to farm in the game was actually all of Argus. These 10 mounts all come from Argus drops. And they're all really good drop chances. Um, some come from eggs. But most of them are like a 3% drop chance. And I think all of the Argus rares are very efficient and good to do. Now into dungeon drops. Um, the Midnight's Eternal Reigns from Karazhan is a 1%er from the stables. It takes a while to get to him doing the dungeon version, not the raid version. So I would, wouldn't suggest it for that reason. But the one on the right is actually easy. Um, if you have a group of five, you get one guaranteed to drop and you can just funnel it to yourself. Uh, you just have to go click on some crystals in the dungeon itself and I just haven't had a group to do it yet. Now we're into raid drops. Um, I'm going to throw all of these into the same bin of being difficult and hard to get over a long period of time they're all one percent drops from all the raids uh raid drops are like that but you still want to be going for them um running the raid in argus is efficient because you get two chances in amount you get a chance at shackled urzel and the antoran charhound that's from antorus in argus but yeah i haven't done any of the class mounts but this, this is just a lot of questing so i will look to do them in the future but i don't think they're very good because each one is a different class i think some classes get multiple but honestly i'm not very informed on the class mounts from legion so i don't really have much of a clue as far as that goes and then same thing with always i don't think paragon reps should be something you spam because the chances are pretty bad but you will get a lot of chances at the gleaming footlockers from farming just the rares because all these rare spawns that drop a mount have a world quest associated with them and you just get passive rep so the ones on the right with the Gleaming Foot Locker, you actually get a fair amount of chances of getting some of these just from doing these mount farms. But the rest of these, uh, I would not suggest doing. And that's it for Legion. Moving into Draenor, uh, these first two vendor mounts are just gold. You just buy them at the vendor. I think it's 10k, 20k, very easy. Uh, these rep ones... You have to buy a medallion of the legions or grind the individual reps and grinding the individual reps can be time consuming but if you're just buying legion of the medallion uh then it just takes the crystals to buy them so this one this one and this one are pretty easy if you just buy medallions but the two in the middle is a pvp grind i think so i'm not really sure how hard it is i wouldn't suggest doing them really but this one is just 50k crystals, which kind of sucks, but it's not that bad, actually. I'm going to make it orange. And then the, the Saber Stalker grind is actually pretty easy. I'm going to mark it as like a light green. Uh, I would suggest doing the Saber Stalker grind, especially when it's wa uh, Drain or Time Walking. It's really efficient to do it then. Um... With the Death Tusk Fell Boar, this is from Vulgen's Headhunters. Uh, you get this from the medallion if you just have the, if you just bought the medallions and you get all the rep. Uh, it's very easy if you just do it that way. And then the one on the far right is just 150k crystals, so that's probably the last one you complete of the rep grinds in Wad. Moving on to the garrisons, uh, these are all yellow. You just do one quest a week. And then at your garrison, you can do an invasion. And then if you max out your points, you get like three chances at a mount. Uh, so you can you can be you can get really lucky and get three in one week if you're really gaming. But I think it's pretty efficient to do these. Uh, the garrison invasion doesn't take but like thirty minutes to do the quest and do the invasion, so it doesn't take long at all to do. Plus, you want the crystals to buy the rep mounts, so it's efficient in that way. Uh, as for the missions, uh, this Colfist Gronling, you could buy it for literally like. A couple thousand gold on the auction house i'm pretty sure it's cheap and then this other one you do have to get from a war table mission and i don't i haven't looked into the war table stuff so no clue how hard it is to actually get it might even be bred moving on to the stables 
this is a really, really good efficient grind to get out of the way and do. Uh, it's just dailies. Um, the stable grinds do not take long at all. And you also knock out this achievement. There, are, Well, I think it's like counted down here as an achievement. But there is an achievement amount for completing all the stable stuff. So really easy, really good. And moving on to the trading post. Uh, this is another one you get from rep from the uh, medallions, so it's not hard to get. Uh, it's probably like a light green if you do the medallion route. Um, I suggest the medallion route if you're coming in late and don't want to do all the individual grinds. Uh, you just straight up buy Legion of the Medallion on the auction house, and might be expensive. You might be spending like over 100,000 gold total to max out all your reps, but it's pretty efficient, Big big picture. Meow! Uh, as for the fishing shack, yeah, you don't like the fishing shack? Oh, okay, buddy. Uh, the fishing shack, I believe it is an orange grind. It is kind of hard to get all the currency from fishing. Uh, I do not suggest doing it. There's better stuff. And then all of these rare spawns are free absolutely free and this wolf is omega free you could buy him on the auction house for like all 500 gold uh, and all of these ones on the left hand side of the wolf you just turn on war mode and go explore and you'll probably find some of these spawns up and they are a 100 percent drop chance when they are up so really good really efficient with the other one the void talon uh this is orange slash red uh, it can be an expensive one to buy, and it's hard to spawn and get, but it, it is a really nice looking mount. So These three on the right, I currently camp them. They actually aren't bad at all if you just camp an alt there. Um, and these can also drop the medallion to the legion, so it can be good gold uh, from like an alt passively making income. Uh, it's actually a pretty good grind for an alt to be doing, is to camp your three... Or to camp an alt at one of the three spawns out there and just see what's up when you're in the tannin jungle. But, yeah. You can get duplicates from the rattling cage. I've actually gotten three of the rattling cage drops, but I've gotten a duplicate. So, I still need one more to complete that. And then Rukmar, uh, he's actually yellow now because his drop chance got buffed. All the world bosses mount drops got buffed when Dragonflight came out, and it's pretty efficient to do now. And then the raid drops... Uh, these are all going to be red because they're raid drops and pretty, I mean, like, they can be orange-ish. Uh, depends if you have the skip or not. If you have the skip, uh, they get more efficient and more better to do. Well, more efficient to do. But that'll do it for Draenor. Moving into Pandaria, you start at the Golden Lotus. The Golden Lotus and the Shadow Pan mounts are extremely easy to get because you get them passively when you're grinding these three Dire Horns. So these Dire Horn spawns, uh, the drop chances on them are pretty good. It's just getting the spawn and having characters on low pop realms or having war mode on. Uh, not hard, but you'll just earn these reps over time, and they're very easy for that. Uh, this Order of the Cloud Serpent, uh, all you do is you just go farm eggs in Pandaria with war mode on, and you're chilling. Uh, I think this took me like all of two hours to farm all the eggs. I also did it with... Uh, during a time walking event, if you're in Mr. Pandaria time walking, this Order of the Cloud server you can do in like under an hour. It's crazy how fast you can get it done. But really efficient. Uh, same thing with the Kunlai vendor. Uh, this one on the right does cost 110k, but it's also the transmog mount. So I suggest it for that. Um, into the Tillers. The Tiller rep is quite a bit of dailies. Uh, this gets a lot more value with uh, the time walking event uh but this does take quite a bit of time it is pretty daily locked uh into the primal eggs so the first one you're gonna get uh the first egg you get is a guaranteed mount so it's really easy but you can get duplicates here so first two easy and then your last one might take you a while so now we're into the quest mounts uh this grand wyvern one is rep locked if i remember right so that one kind of sucks but this Order of the Cloud Server one you can get in all of like an hour of questing. It's really easy. And this Bone White Primal Raptor you can get for just buying the bones off the auction house and go turning it in. Now we're into Raid Drops. Uh, 
this one on the left is a really cool mount, but pretty inefficient big picture. Uh, I got really lucky with spam farming uh, Hordon. Uh, actually, it's efficient to just get to Horadon. I think he's worth it, but Jikun, you have to go deep into Throne of Thunder, and Jikun is one of my luckiest mounts. I got him on my first attempt when I had no clue about mount farming. I was just doing random content. And then this is from Siege of Orgrimmar. This is a hard no. Until they release a skip for this raid, I would not touch this with a 10-foot pole. It takes forever to get to the end boss here, so... Now we're into rare spawns. So this one on the left, you just buy with gold. Uh, it's it's good. You just buy it. And then the one on the far right is Huolon. Huolon's an easy camp now after the buffs. Uh, it's worth doing. It's worth killing it since they buffed world bosses. And speaking of world bosses, now all four of these are suggested grinds. I mean, they're, they're still yellow because they are 1%, but it's worth doing once a character each week. Moving into the last bit of Pandaria... This one on the left, the Grand Armored Wyvern, uh, I do not suggest doing him. I'm marking both of this one and the one to the right of him as orange. It takes a lot of days of doing the rep activities here of dailies to get them. Uh, if it's not mop time walking, I do not suggest even touching them. Uh, the Ezra Water Strider is a really fun one. Um, you just go to the fishing village and it's a bunch of dailies. Really efficient if you're doing it during time walking. Uh, really good to do. And then as for these two, these two come from those tokens from the uh, Dire Horns, so they are free as well. They are very good. And this disc of the Red Flying Cloud is just an hour of flying around. It's actually green. This is extremely, extremely easy. And then the last one, the Heavenly Golden Cloud Serpent is a bunch of grinding mobs. It takes a lot of grinding mobs in the Timeless Isle, so I do not suggest it for that reason, but it is plus one. So that's it for Pandaria. Moving into Kata, we start with the vendor mounts. This Drake of the West Wind is a lot of days of dailies. I think it's like 16 days of dailies. So it's meh for that. And that's apparently these are also tedious dailies. So they kind of suck. Um, this Reigns of the Spectral Wolf is PVP in that island. Uh, I have no clue how hard that is or if you can buy a carry for it. But these two, these two camels on the right, they are very good. You just put on the tabard and you go grind the dungeon. It takes all of an hour, maybe two hours, to get the exalted and buy the two camels. It's really good. Also, these camels cost nothing. It's good. Now we're into the dungeon drops. Uh, this battle bear is really free. It's actually just straight up green. Uh, you just speed run the dungeon, I think, or you maybe do something specific, but it's 100% drop. Um, the Drake of the Northwind is from the Vortex Pinnacle. This is a spammable one. You could do it like 10 times an hour, and it's a 1% drop chance. So if you want to spam, that's a good one to do it. Same with this one in the middle, the Stone Drake. It's also a 1% chance, and it's spammable. And then we're into the Zulgarub drop chances. Uh, these are both pretty efficient, especially for alts. It's a real, Zulgarub is a really good spot to put your alts and run these two for the two drop chances. So now we're into raid drops. Far left, actually all three of these are Dragon Soul on the left-hand side. I'm going to say Dragon Soul is pretty efficient because there's three drops. You can get two drop chances from the final boss, and then you have um, B12 Experiment 12B from the boss before last. So yeah, it's pretty efficient, but doing that one boss where you fly in the back is time-consuming, so it sucks for that. Now we're into Alakir. Um, Alakir is a good spot to camp an alt at. Uh, I got lucky with him, but he does not take long at all to get to, and it's a good one to do. And then Firelands, I suggest kind of everyone does. These raid drops are all pretty good, honestly. The raid drops from Kata are good. Reigns Poseidus is free. I think that costs nothing on the auction house. And the Phosphorant Drake and the Grey Riding Camel are pretty rare. Uh, you can look to buy carries for this or have a character on a dead realm so you can just find the spawn yourself. But if you don't have a character on a dead realm, definitely look to do a carry service for these two. So moving to Wrath of the Lich King, uh, I have no clue about these two quest mounts. I have no, don't know how to do them, but these four vendor mounts are free. And I personally hated the Argent tournament. I hated 
all everything about it. Uh, you have to fly a lot to do the dailies here, and it is the same exact three dailies. Uh, felt really bad when I did it. I only did one, and it felt really bad when I did it. So maybe I was doing it inefficiently. I know you can do the dungeon there and speed it up a bit, but for now, I do not think it's a good one to do. Moving to the Sons of Hodir, uh, if there's a Wrath of the Lich King time walking, I think this this one is good to do. The Sons of the Hodir gives two mounts when you get exalted with them, so it's pretty good. Uh, the Wormrest Accord one, I haven't done this yet, but it is really easy. You just put on a tabard. And then the Cracked Egg, I know it's a rare chance and it's also rep locked, so I think this is probably an orange. I do not think it's very good, but I, this thing can come from the Black Market Auction House, so... Moving into these two, uh, this one on the left is just do the dungeon speedily, and you get the mount. I remember that one. Uh, very easy. And then this is from Utgard Pinnacle. Uh, he is a 1% chance from the dungeon, and I'm going to mark him as yellow. He's a good spot to camp an alt at. Uh, moving into the raid drops. So these first two are from the Eye of Eternity, and they are not guaranteed... But they're pretty likely to drop. So I'm going to mark them as like a little bit above green. Uh, pretty easy. Definitely worth doing. You just go run Eye of Eternity. Uh, the Obsidian Sanctum one. This Twilight Drake I think is a guaranteed. Yeah. I think both of these are guaranteed. You just run them on different, diffi different difficulties. Excuse me. So they're very easy. And then Anixia, you just run Anixia. Um, is pretty far out of the way, so it's yellow for that, but good potential spot you could camp an alt at. And now we're into the Vault of Archivon. Uh, this raid just sucks to get to, so I'm marking it yellow for that. It is, I think it's a 1% chance as well. And now we're at arguably two of the longest raid bosses to do for old content, which is Mimiron's Head and Invincible. And these two are extremely inefficient. Uh, shout out to Veladri who has 470 attempts at Invincible at the time of this video. And he still has not gotten Invincible. So good luck with that, buddy. And then the last one is TLPD. Uh, I bought TLPD for like 150k randomly on my server. Uh, you can look to buy a carry here. Or camp a character on a dead realm and hope you get the spawn. Um, it's probably an orange. It could be a lot of time investment if you're trying to get it authentically, but if you buy a carry, uh, it's somewhat efficient for gold. So, yeah. Moving into Burning Crusade and Classic. Uh, this Scenario Expedition one is really easy. You just do a dungeon. Uh, not hard at all. Uh, the Maghar grind is extremely efficient, especially if it's Burning Crusade. Like, this is all green. Uh, the Maghar is just killing a bunch of mobs. Uh, same with the Shatari Skyguard. This is also an extremely efficient grind because you're getting five five mounts for one grind of rep. Uh, the Nether Wing, it is. I didn't do the version where you just grind the egg spawns. Uh, I did the dailies here, so it's it's got to be yellow for efficiency. Big picture, um, it does take a lot of time. I think it's like two weeks worth of dailies. If it's Burning Crusade, time walking, really do all of these. If you don't have these, it is so efficient to do, but. Netherwings was pretty enjoyable. You go in the mines and do all those dailies, but um, yeah, definitely do the Maghar and the Skyguard. Those are super, super efficient. And same with all of these vendor mounts. They are just extremely free. You just buy them. You're chilling. Now we're into the dungeon drops. Uh, this is from Sethic Halls on the left. Uh, it is a good one to do. Uh, I really enjoyed running this dungeon a bunch of times, and... Same with Magister's Terrace. This one's a higher drop chance, and if you're doing time walking, you have a chance to get it from the end of time walking. I know a lot of people are getting it recently, but yeah. Now into the raid drops. Um, Ashes of Alar is definitely yellow, um, pretty far out of the way, and same with the Warhorse's Reigns. It's really quick to do, but just far out of the way. So good spot to camp your alts. And then into Classic. This Ravasaur is like two weeks of dailies, so eh. it's yellow. It's not hard. It's just two weeks of dailies. takes time. Uh, this this Death Charger's Reigns, I'm going to mark him as red. 
he's like a one in 1000 chance, although he is spammable. I got really lucky and got it in like 50 runs or something. It didn't take me long at all. And the last one from Classic uh, is extremely easy. This is These ones drop from trash in the raid, so very easy. The last thing to cover is racial mounts, and every single one of these is green. Do all of these, make sure you have all of them. Uh, the only one that might take some time is this one. I don't have this one. It's from questing or like elf heritage or something. I just haven't done that quest, but the rest of these do all of them. It is all free. I think you just make a trial character and just send gold to that character. And then you just buy all the mounts because you're, that's your race. So yeah, really like this is the freest mounts you can get in the game for like as getting quantity. So yeah, make sure you have all of these. Uh, very good. After that very long-winded explanation of all of my difficulty ratings, let's go over some things about alt efficiency. So, mount farming favors repetition over spontaneity. Getting in routines will net you way more mounts long-term than if you randomly go do some mount runs. So, as for the notes that I have for alt efficiency, the more alts, the generally the better. It's just more chances it mounts. And you should make these alts on different servers and low pop servers. There's a lot of benefit to farming on low population servers because you can just get spawns more frequently. Uh, you can consider sending gold to these alts so that these alts can look to buy mounts from the black market, black market auction house. The black market auction house can net you a lot of time save in the long term if you just stay committed and treat it as like checking it as a daily uh, I've seen some insane deals on the black market auction house and overall I can save you insane amounts of time. Like you could buy stuff like invincible on there and you could maybe get a deal for it for under a million gold and bam, getting invincible just took you an hour instead of, you know, <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of hours. So, and the last note I have is find mounts that you want to achieve and camp your characters there and treat logging into them as a daily. Uh, if you don't enjoy logging into these characters, maybe you don't do it for a while. Uh, overall, collecting mounts long term is a really long grind. And if you want to achieve 500 mounts and you're only like 50 mounts, it's going to take you hundreds and hundreds of hours long term. So do not burn out. On screen now, I'm going to list my favorite mount runs to do with my guild group when we're not doing any like major content in the game. Uh, stuff like Sanctum of Domination is going to be harder because it was really recent, but if you have a big enough group, you can run them on Mythic, and it's not that bad. But anything past Legion, you can just about solo everything there, but it, it does make it a lot more fun to run it with friends because then you can get multiple drops and maybe trade Transmog and all that stuff. So, yeah. That will do it for this very long-winded video about everything you could know about mount collecting and my thoughts on specific mounts. If you would like to support me further, please feel free to check out my Patreon, where I can do individual log reviews to improve your damage in Warcraft, and you can help further support my content. Thanks guys, and I'll catch you in the next video.